Hey everybody, Mark again here, Weather Channel Live. I'm giving you an 11 p.m. update, that way people can be notified of what's going on. And then after the Weather Channel, I'm going to show you what's going on with the severe storm side uh, of this. But the main thing is going to be the wind and the flooding event, because all this land is 10 meters, uh, 10 feet below sea level. So when they say there's 9 to 14 feet storm surge, this area will actually get 19 to 24 feet storm surge. And I'm, I'm showing that she's bringing 20 to 30 foot waves. I'll go all over all that with y'all as soon as Weather Channel gets off. Uh, if you want to see the latest updates on my other channel, the link is in the description or uh, on my main page, is Weather Channel Plus. So God bless you. Hope you all safe. Hope you hope all those that's in the path are evacuating. All right, I'll see you right after. Because a major hurricane, the wind. Yeah, we talk about how water takes more lives, but wind took lives in Rita with fallen trees and so forth that could take lives this time. So we've got to shelter from the wind. Even if you evacuate, you've got to go to a place that's safe from the wind. Look how far inland these hurricane force winds could go. We could have extensive areas of power outages in that area, but likely going up all the way into Arkansas, possible up into metro areas like Little Rock and Memphis. So uh, I know we know what to do for storm surge. We got to evacuate. We know what to do for wind. We got to shelter from it and shelter like you would for a tornado, really, if you got trees in the area. But what do we do for power outages? We lost lives in Rita. We've talked a lot about Rita by comparison. We lost a half a dozen people in Beaumont, Texas, in Rita because of carbon monoxide poisoning. Let's not let that happen again. So operate those generators outdoors, far from the buildings. Don't let the candles burn unattended. Uh, that can start fires. Stay away from the power lines and uh, you'll shelter if you need uh, backup power, if you have life-sustaining uh, medical equipment. And the timing of all of this is really getting short. I mean, everything, evacuation, getting your supplies, being off the roads, being in your safe place needs to be done by the time the winds of tropical storm force start arriving. And that would be you know, midday tomorrow on the central Louisiana coast, not long after that along the Texas-Louisiana border. So tonight and then early tomorrow are the last opportunities for you to get ready. And that's the time frame you have left to evacuate. And it's in the storm surge area. It's not just along the coastline. You might be being told to evacuate up to 30 miles inland from the immediate Gulf front because of how far inland the salt water could get pushed over the normally dry ground and then up rivers like the, the Calcasieu River and in, in through Sabine Pass into the Beaumont Port Arthur Orange area. Nine to 14 feet of storm surge flooding above normally dry ground would be highest near the coastline, but it again could penetrate a long ways inland. And in Galveston, three to five feet, four to six in southeast Louisiana. There's a large area that's going to be getting the storm surge. You got to to evacuate by early tomorrow. And then we've got the rainfall to deal with. Uh, the Euro model uh, graphic here isn't updating properly, but the bottom line is was, these numbers are what we need to focus on. We could have uh, you know, feet of rainfall that leads to tremendous inland flooding. So Mark, it, none of it is good news tonight. The, yeah. the, the intensification as expected and the anticipated rapid intensification between now and landfall tomorrow night, it makes every hazard worse and time is running out to get ready and evacuate. Just about any one of these uh, impacts from the storm could be a life-threatening one. Almost all of them are pointed towards Lake Charles, Louisiana. That is where we find meteorologist Chris Bruin tonight waiting for those impacts to arrive. Chris. The calm before the storm, the last real quiet night before Hurricane Laura moves ashore here in Louisiana or far eastern Texas. Again, the exact landfall still extremely hard to imagine uh, based on current forecast. But even a 20 mile difference is going to mean all the more on your wind gusts, your surge potential, and so many other factors. So you got to constantly keep up with it. Hopefully at this point you have already evacuated and you are at your safe place because time is running out. For people who are evacuating overnight, uh, traffic's running good here on I-10. You can see the high bridge over the Calcasieu River. That's actually direct access down to the Gulf of Mexico. So when we talk about storm surge, while Lake Charles may not be right on the Gulf of Mexico, it's about 30 miles away, believe it or not, that water will rise all the way here. 
especially if we get the current forecast of 9 to 13 feet as a kind of a worst case scenario. That's why the storm surge warnings are there. I want to pan off to the right though, and there are some remnant memories of past hurricanes that have affected the area, including Rita. That was the, the last big one that affected southwestern Louisiana. See that uh, abandoned parking garage? Well, there actually used to be a casino there on the water. It was one of those huge steamboats. Well, the surge got so high, it actually slammed that whole boat up against that parking garage and just destroyed the whole casino as a whole. And now it has sit vacant, almost as a memory of how dangerous hurricanes can be to this part of the coastline. So it's a fresh reminder, forecast calling for 9 to 13 feet of storm surge on the higher end that will cause flooding all around Lake Charles. So hopefully you evacuated, of course, 5 to 8 inches of rainfall and those winds. This is going to be a wind story here, folks. Power outages, tree damage, even structural damage when we see wind gusts well over 100 miles per hour. And want to talk a little bit more about that wind potential because, gosh, this could be, for some of you, a life-threatening wind event. And that's not always the case with tropical systems, that the wind alone could be part of the life-threatening story. But when you see an intensifying hurricane that comes in as a major hurricane, 120 mile per hour in the forecast Wednesday evening, landfall overnight, potentially still strengthening up through that point, you know, if you live in a mobile home, for example, that is not a safe place to be. And it's not just about right at landfall. There is a huge zone where wind could be too much for a mobile home. Uh, I would argue if you're in this, you know, deeper orange shaded area, then a mobile home may not be a safe structure when you have 60 mile per hour winds or greater. And then it's, you know, no question, 110 plus uh, is also not a safe place to be. And again, that forecast could be 120 to even 130 in a very small area, but still uh, someone is going to see that kind of wind potential. Let's talk a little bit about the timing of this wind and where it is right now. Here's our center and look at this. We have a buoy that's out here. So far north and west, uh, already gusting to 63. So the winds are really starting to ramp up. Uh, this center could go very close to that buoy location. We'll see if that measurement continues to update through the night or if at some point it gives out because of the winds. That is always a possibility, uh, but it just shows us that those winds are increasing. We have some services that, you know, look at the high resolution, look at the wind. Earlier this evening, it was a lopsided storm with about 120 miles of winds off to that east side. The storm doesn't look quite like this anymore. We've seen that wrapping around and really closing off that center, increasing the chance for, you know, more organization. You have that symmetrical look to the storm. And so let's time it out as, as seen by one model, really ramping up those winds all the way to landfall point, which occurs sometime overnight Wednesday into Thursday and then that wind goes inland from there. Quickly, we can show you that it's a huge swath of tropical storm force winds and then the hurricane winds on top of that go all the way into Arkansas through the day Thursday. A long duration wind event that does not stop at the coast. And when you get a swath of wind like this that moves over the water, that wind actually pushes the water. That's what's call, what causes an event known as storm surge and Dr. Nab, the numbers from the model output here for storm surge are jaw-droppingly frightening. Yes, and uh, I hope that we, we scare people just enough to motivate you to act. That's the point here. We need to be scared of storm surge. It takes lives. And we need to be uh, afraid enough of all of the hazards that Laura brings so that we do everything possible uh, to survive the storm in the aftermath. And I know we've talked a lot about Rita, and Laura will not be exactly like Rita, but there's so many things we can learn from Rita. And we lost seven lives from the direct forces of the storm in Rita that came ashore in about the area where Laura will, at about the intensity that Laura will be. Laura might even be a little stronger. We lost seven people. One was due to drowning in the Lake Charles area. Okay, so there were six feet of flooding in Lake Charles from the storm surge. And we could have that repeat again uh, with Laura. Four people died due to fallen trees, and, and for the most part, that happened on the Texas side. You are not off the hook to the left of the center and far away from the center, and those fatalities were wind taking down trees onto people's homes. So Mark talked about wind. It's a real big issue to, uh, uh, to, uh, to take seriously as a life-threatening aspect of the storm. We lost a person due to a tornado in Mississippi, and we lost a person due to a rip current on the Florida 
panhandle. All of these things are risks, again, this time, in addition to the carbon monoxide poisoning, we lost people in Beaumont, Texas, during the power outage in Rita. So with all of those lessons to be learned from those casualties, hopefully we can keep the fatality numbers as low as possible, hopefully zero from this point forward. But it's so similar to Rita, we can't avoid talking about it. Tomorrow night late, it could come ashore at stronger than 120 miles an hour. And it'll be big enough to push a lot of water around, and it will not just be at the coast. It will go well inland, up to 30 miles from the coastline, and we've got to get out before the winds of tropical storm force arrive. That'll be during the day tomorrow, and we're talking 9 to 14 feet above normally dry ground of saltwater flooding near the coast going miles inland, Colleen. People have got to get out and get out right now. Yes, Dr. Nab, this is an extremely serious situation as we continue to watch Laura strengthen and unfortunately continuing to strengthen overnight into tomorrow. I want to talk about some city timing for Houston. I know you're right now on that left side of that track. Again, you're going to have to watch this forecast very carefully as it continues to hone in on where Laura will make landfall. But you will see some impacts, not a lot of rain, but the wind could certainly pick up as we head into Wednesday evening and into Thursday morning. Morning. Now, as we get closer to the coast in Galveston, you're also going to be dealing with that storm surge three to five feet along with the rainfall as well as hurricane force winds could be possible as we head through uh, Wednesday night as well as into Thursday morning. So let's time this out as we start midnight on into the early hours of Wednesday. This is your last chance. I know Dr. Nab, also Mark have been talking so much about this is it. You can't be doing this tomorrow afternoon. It's over. So tonight and early tomorrow is really the only only time that you're going to have to get out. So for Houston, you're going to be watching those winds approaching around 50 miles an hour. So tropical storm force winds. But look what's off to your right. Beaumont over 100 miles an hour as we head into Wednesday night and into Thursday morning as Laura makes landfall. And then we'll see things calm down just a little bit, at least for uh, the Texas side, as we head late into Thursday into Friday. But again, we're still talking about storm surge as well as wind and rain, especially for the Louisiana coastline as well. And right here on the weather well there you go guys that's the official from the people and this is the storm coming in and then when if you go to ventusky.com and hit waves and move it forward a little bit you can see that laura is bringing in 20 to 30 foot waves with her so she's pretty mean uh thing going on there and then here's a track now that you have of your severe storms of where the impact is going to be As of 6 p.m., it's going to start rolling in some storms, but as of 9 p.m., it's really going to be more of the heavy part of Laura moving in. And then with the storm surge factor plus the rain coming down, then you get the winds. Please, if you can evacuate, evacuate. This is not something that you want to play around with. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play it so you can see exactly what the path is that we have of Laura. Now, if you need information for shelters or any place to go to of where you need help from, uh, we'll be live streaming this early tomorrow morning so people can get uh, notifications. I'll be doing it for a couple of hours, and then I'm going to come update on on, uh, on my second, my main channel. And then I'll be back and live stream the evening for you guys. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, Psalms 117, straight to the point. Praise Jehovah, all you nations, commend him, all you clans. For toward us, his loving kindness has proved almighty. And the trueness of Jehovah is a time indefinite. Praise Yah, you people. Amen. Give God glory in everything that you do. Don't take any glory from God. All glory is his. Amen. May y'all be safe. I will update this tomorrow. Uh, join the live stream if you need live coverage to see what's going on. But if you can evacuate this storm, please go. This will not be a fun time.